I walked that precarious line, loving laughter, lessons, and literature. I went toe-to-toe -to -toe with a battered and bruised ego. I took small leaps without looking. I tossed the umbrella aside and let the tides tie knots in my soul. During my first six years as a teacher, I was also a stand-up comedian. And that's no metaphor, I was literally a comedian. Paid to make fun, hired for laughter, but I'm no modern day court jester. Me and my kind are not clowns. Clowns lack courage. But comedians, well, they're actually incredibly insecure, so never mind that. <laughs> I balanced careers for years, feeling no need to pick one or the other. Two roads diverged in a wood, and you could only pick one. Suck it, Robert Frost, I took both. <laughs> <laughs> to and from school, I drove. To and from gigs, I drove. With insecurity in the passenger seat and self-doubt in the rearview mirror, I drove. I drove and drove, always the driver, no matter rain, sleet, snow, or hellfire. I was the driver, and I drove to and from, until, and without warning, I was driven to insanity. Driven from decision to indecision, incisions ruptured in my sealed vision was a thing of the past. My eyes were open, and I did not like what I saw. I know what makes the sad clown sad now. One Saturday night, I watched a comedian as he performed, just two hours after picking out a casket for his nine-year-old daughter, and I drove. Find your path among them, they stand. Release the bark from your hand, and it flows like sand. Catching the rays that reach your feet, look up, the creatures that scurry. Along the path, twigs snap and bloom into a fire, like the flowers that grew on the mountain. Climb it, and throw them in the fire. Smoke essence of flora, skimming waves of air, the creatures, they came there, curious and without a care. Lending a borrow, that's where I slept, the foxes wide-eyed and curious as I dreamt, with my palm upon the bark. This poem is untitled, but I guess it's kind of in dedication to my girlfriend, so there's that. Alright. So, a oh, sweet divine, looks like I'm here again. This time my vagabond heart is trying to act like that white knight trying to save the princess from the castle. Sorry. Alright. My only ambition is to perfect my art in order to keep her safe, because that bird sings a beautiful song. She can fly away, but she keeps coming back, only to show me that I'm the one giving up my freedom to see her at the park. I have to shoot some cocaine just to keep my heart rate low. The anxious pressure of her spirit shatters my tibula, fibula, and femur. While I'm on my hands and knees, I can feel how every single one of her hyperventilation, signaling laughter, sends stress fractures through my ulna. Once we embrace, I feel my whole body shatter. Now my spirit is free to be with her in the trees and listen to her sing. Hi. I'm Becca. This doesn't have a title. I'm not good at titles. Drink, scream, pass out, repeat. Drink, scream, pass out, repeat. It is a cycle that never ends, never bends, never breaks for anyone. It never mattered. It is a cycle of broken homes and broken families, and let's pretend this never happened. It is the demon unleashed in you, the sounds of hell that come up when you cry, and I just can't listen anymore. It is a daughter who will always believe she is the reason that you can't stand it here. A daughter who wanted to leave only to escape. It is a son who has grown up with this since age seven. It is a husband who believes it is his fault alone, but no, he can do nothing to help until you open up and believe this yourself. It is a family that is trying. It is a cycle. It is a thought. It is an addiction. It is a takeover. It is a plea. But no one can help you until you help yourself.
garden of a mountain called Snowy Shawnee. You look at her, but she's not there. Her voice on a cassette tape continually repeating, because you don't understand her and you don't want to hear her. Not listening to her, but knowing what she's saying, caring. You take in what she's silently whispering, that you're her best friend, and you throw her down. You look away and show no compassion. Rip down the ground and astounding beauty of which you see, but you don't care. You care, but you don't take her into consideration. You. The word you claim to be yours, but do you let her claim it? Do you let her scribble it on her torn page, or is it encrypted in a torn heart that's all for you? Is it a choking laugh where you, in where you turn away and run the thought forever looking up to you, or the people looking down at you? He's my brother. Not pulsing through my blood, it's one of him. It's only a wish. Somewhere in my body, pumping in my body, such a strong love of someone who is not mine. He's existent in my body. Also the middle name of his older brother and in primary care of the saint of mother. A boy looked at, no, stared at, everywhere he goes. Because of an audible sound of which he tries to mutter out his only way of speaking. Communicating with an angel, telling her that he loved her, but he can't say it. He's a miracle. A love put here to save a mouth from speaking too much, from judging people. First looks of hate and annoyance. Of thinking too much about someone who is a miracle to me. A miracle to me, a miracle put here on earth to make sounds of an unspoken and unavailable voice, a foggy love of whom he gives to everyone with the kiss on the top of their hand. The kiss of the guardian and a gentle grasp of an inspiring sentiment. Judgment shouldn't be looked at, stared through, or analyzed. Disabilities and retardation don't have faces. The faces aren't the word, so why use it? Maybe they don't like the words that you use, like you. Thank you. for a few months, so that's breaking a new record, I suppose. And listen to you and your bullshit argument 
just to get my Shakespeare back. For as many times as we played house during our childhood, we should collect a dollar from every person who said we wouldn't make it and pay for the college tuition of our future lovely sons and daughters. The weight of our relationship is too great for shoulders as small as mine. And you and I, we're not boyfriend and girlfriend. We don't really fit into that kind of title. We were just two hearts that both fell in love with the same cover of Elvis' song called I Can't Help Falling in Love with You. When we went to Bonavir's concert, you were the one I came to see because, good God, you're beautiful. And I've never told you that, but you are. I can guarantee you that no girl will notice how young and gullible your eyes make you look. And even though that's probably the most masculine comment you've ever received, take it as a compliment because I want it to be one. Let's both admit I'm the most boyish girl that either of us know, but let's also admit that means no cattiness or nail polish stains on the carpet or hair straighteners that smell the bathroom or long showers doing nothing but standing under the water. All right. I do take long showers doing nothing but standing under the water, but just so you know, the burning drops that land on my skin do not compare to the bullet of static you sent through me when the tips of your fingers grab the hem of my shirt or when you grab a few of my fingers to go and lead me to places unknown, which normally means the place that behind your house that we went to as kids. I don't care where you want to go because I will come with you regardless. You'll be the first to fall asleep. And instead of tucking the edge of the blanket to the bottom of your chin, kissing the tip of your nose like I imagine most girls would do, I'll steal the blanket and wrap myself like a chrysalis and make myself a cup of tea. You always leave your tumbler open, so I'll go into yours and be black photographs of roughed up Oxford or skinny topography or a low contrast landscape to make your followers think that you're some kind of cliche hipster. My pyramids are yours. I'll let you keep the blanket and I'll make you the tea. I'll let you pay the bill every once in a while, but don't count on that part. I won't hide your tumbler and I'll give you back your skateboard that I took without permission two years ago, but I'm pretty sure you never noticed. I'll serenade you with simple Bruce Springsteen chord progressions that truly are not impressive and every other year I'll perhaps let you buy me a birthday present as long as you don't go overboard. Also, when we play Call of Duty, I'll let you in, and I won't let you be aware of that so that you think you actually won. I don't care how many waves knock out the back of my knees as I face the ocean backwards, because the only thing that can truly knock me down is the loss of your hand and mine. <laughs> yeah, that was really good. That was really good. That was so good. I'm so damn tired of shaking, breaking down to the ground and feeling the world collapse around me. Because of ignorance, because of the rape subculture going through young men's minds, because of apologists apologizing for the wrong thing. Because it did not start with a 16 year old girl in Ohio, but the one in three women and the one in five men were affected by a sexual assault and rape in America. And me. My mother was raped by my best friend's father, and my family was draped under the curtains of the American justice system, where there's more protection for the rapist than the victim, even though the victimizer lived four fucking houses down the street. And I'm sorry if I'm not censoring myself, but I was censored for far too long. And he did not just vandalize my home, but he vandalized my heart with the words fuck and slut and whore. More than you can imagine has happened to the victims of sexual assault. So place your minor inside and be careful of the words you say. And I pray to a God I don't believe in. Everyone will. For the one in three, the one in five, and me.